So the Adrian Army wanted me to talk about disappointment and we have all been there. I'm the librarian. I'm and I came, and I to, came read. to read. Please make sure to check out everything in my description box. I have my ebook up, I have Patreon that's up, and I also have For the Culture podcast. It's about to be lit tomorrow. We're gonna give you know we're gonna give it to you on, on Miss Tuesday. So tomorrow we're gonna be giving you a sickening ass episode. So make sure to stay tuned to For the Culture Podcast.com and get your goddamn life. So if you're new to this channel, this video is one of the many installments of uh, Motivation Monday, where we here in the Adrian Army, we talk about real shit that affects our lives every goddamn day. So as I was scrolling through the comments of last week's video on Monday, I saw one that really stuck out to me. You know, as usual, at each and every one of these videos, I want you guys to put in the comment section your suggestions on what you think we should talk about on next Monday. But this particular comment was about heartbreak and disappointment. I feel like when we think about heartbreak, we kind of just automatically automatically associated with romantic heartbreak and it's just like no your heart can break for other reasons your heart can break for losing a friend your heart can break from you know your plans not going your way your heart can break from a failure so I guess in this video I'm going to talk about the different ways that I have dealt with it and I try to deal with it honestly no way is perfect and a lot of <laughs> A lot of the ways that I have been dealing with disappointment and heartbreak I know are very unhealthy. Um, so I'll try to acknowledge that as I move through this video. <laughs> and since I already started off an unhealthy part, the first unhealthy way that I deal with disappointment and heartbreak is just like anything else, y'all know that's my personal flaw. I pretend like it's not happening. Okay, that's one of the ways that I deal with it. I pretend like, okay, girl, I'm, I'm fine. Like, uh, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm okay. If people ask me what's wrong, I'm fine. Because it's, it's very difficult, especially in something like a romantic um, heartbreak or something like that. I can only imagine how difficult it would be to be in a workplace and something is visibly wrong with you and you have to sit up here and you have to decide if you want to really be talking out your feelings like that. I'm just like, girl, I'm not really that type of person to be expressing myself, which, as I said, is a flaw that I have. So I will just sit down, I promise you, I will sit down and act like nothing's wrong. I promise you I'll sit down and act like this nigga ain't break my heart last night. I'm just over here working, sis. I, like, everything is fun. cheesy and cute. Until I release an ebook and y'all see all the crazy shit I've been through. <laughs> no, but that's one of the ways I do it. And I, I find that that is very counterproductive. Because I won't not only act like they don't exist, like these feelings of disappointment don't exist. I will degrade myself for even having them in the first place. I'll be like, why the hell are you sad? Why the hell are you mad? You ain't got time for this shit. You don't have time for feelings. You have time to get your work done, make this money, get your degrees, whatever it is that you have to do, and keep it fucking moving. You can't let this one situation be on your mind like that. And I feel like, while well, yes, I don't think we have to. We should stop everything in our lives to sit down and just um, mope for ten years about something that has happened. I still think that, um, and it's preaching to myself. I still think that we we need to set aside time to feel the emotions that come up like girl stop acting like you're not human and I'm preaching to honestly I'm this is literally a sermon to myself stop acting like you're not human stop acting like these feel these things called called emotions are just segments of your imagination take some time to just feel it you don't have to do anything else but just goddamn feel it to get it out your system if you have to write about it if you have to talk to a friend about it if you have to call your mom about it if you whatever you have to do if you have to go goddamn exercise because I know many people may not have have a lot of people they can rush to spill all their guts out but whatever find a healthy way to deal with it so that you can process the emotion like process why is it you feel what you feel and then you can move the fuck on for me since we're talking about why we feel what we feel for me I feel like a lot of um, the source of my feelings of disappointment whenever they arise comes from me really being pissed at myself because it's like I plan I, I put so much energy into X Y or Z and I plan specifically I plan my life around this like say it's uh, getting a certain project done and accepted by by something or someone or whatever. I planned my life around this, I worked hard at it, sacrificed for this, I ignored people to get this shit done, and even as I did everything that I knew I was supposed to do, shit just doesn't, it just doesn't work out. Sometimes shit just doesn't fucking work out. And it's interesting because I was talking to my mother this week and I was telling her about certain things that I was experiencing and I was just like, I don't, I feel like I've worked so hard in regards to this specific issue that I was talking to her about. I, I felt like I should be in a different place like why is this happening to me it shouldn't be this way I plan for um, things to happen a certain way and it did not happen and it should happen and my mom's like why are you stressing out like she told me I would be more concerned if you were just sitting around doing nothing 
I would be more concerned if your ass was not working on the issue. But sometimes life, life is so unpredictable. She told me life is so unpredictable. So you're you're over here with this thinking that put in the right formulas, like it's you know baking soda and vinegar, you're gonna automatically get the reaction, which is a volcano blowing up. And mom was like, my mom was like, no. She was like, life is unpredictable. And I know that may sound like, oh well, Adrian, you should have been known that life is unpredictable. You should that that sounds real cliche. Yeah, it sounds cliche, but that's the that's the reason why a lot of times we have damn disappointment in our lives because we automatically assume that bitch, if I do X, Y, and Z, I'm gonna get A, B, and C in return automatically. And it's just like some shit is just not set in stone. And as Beyonce said, sometimes you just fucking lose. Sometimes you lose, girl. If you put everything that you have into something and you and you lose, it doesn't say it doesn't mean that you're a bad person. It doesn't say anything negative about your character. The only thing that it will say is that you are persevering. If you got your ass back up after that loss and you kept going, so I feel like if we would just be less hard on ourselves. It would be easier for us to process our disappointment and get it out the window and keep it moving. Now, when it comes to romantic heartbreak, I feel like that can also play a part into it. The fact that you planned your life around this person, you built this person up, and they built you up, and you sacrificed certain things, you put so much work into it, and now they fall out of love with you, or they just ain't into you in the goddamn first place, unrequited love type of tease. It makes you almost feel kind of used. It makes you feel pathetic that you spent so much energy and time into something that did not work out. And I think since these things are going to happen, they're bound to happen, you can never stop them from happening. You never know when they're gonna happen. Unpredictable type of teeth. I feel like instead of directing that energy to degrading yourself, making yourself feel bad, it would be more beneficial, easier said than done. It would be beneficial to see your life as a journey and not simply a process to get to a destination. Life is about the journey. Life is about the movement. And I know nobody wants to hear that shit when they're going through heartbreak and shit. Nobody wants to hear that shit when they're going through a disappointment. But life is about progressive movement. Can you wake up and say, I'm gonna work to be a better person than I was yesterday. And no matter what uh, situation may arise, I'm gonna keep moving. I'm gonna keep moving because so many people did before me, so many people are doing it now, and draw encouragement from other people who have faced similar situations. I know that a lot of this sounds very cliche, but I think it has to be said. Also, something else that sounds really cliche is the fact that time heals a lot of shit. That's if you allow yourself to feel the shit in the first place. Stop ignoring it, stop acting like it's not happening, stop pushing it off to the side. If you would process it, if you would feel it in that moment, if you would do whatever, whatever it is that you do to expel stress and do it in a healthy way, after a while, the sting becomes less painful that comes with even like bereavement and death and stuff like that there's literally nothing that can there's nothing that anyone can say especially when it comes to someone dying like I lost my friend as you guys know there's nothing that anyone can say there's nothing that anyone can do to make you come up out of it literally the only thing that will help you process the shit is crying your eyes out taking it a step at a time a day at a time and the fact that as time passes the wound will heal it will heal it will scare a bitch there's gonna be a scar but it will heal eventually so I think just keeping faith in the fact that hey girl you know it stings now it hurts now but I know eventually it may take years eventually and especially if you you know if you need to see a therapist if you need to uh, do some self-care it may take years but I know that it will eventually get better I as I, I'm gonna say 10 times I hate that this shit sounds so goddamn cliche but at my short 23 years of life and I'm still going through this shit I'm still learning I'm still <laughs> using unhealthy ways to deal with shit but I'm also finding that as I learn as I learn myself I can say okay I'm, I'm leaning towards the wrong direction with this, the way that I'm doing this shit the way that I'm taking care of myself with this shit I'm going to have to find a different method so I'm rambling but I think at the end of this you should take away the fact that you should allow yourself to feel these feelings, process it, write about it, cry about it, talk about it, and also you should give yourself time so that the emotional pain can eventually subside. Sometimes the shit comes in waves where you feel a lot of it at one moment, and then it goes away, and then it comes back, but eventually those waves will gradually get less powerful. That's what I found in my life. So yeah, I know this video was kind of like morbid and toned down, but people have really requested me to talk about it, so please tell me what you thought about this video. Let me know if it helped you at all, and please leave your suggestions about what we should talk about for next week in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good goddamn evening.